information on the black church. Gentlemen, we have had so much talk in the last two months over the Eddie Long controversy. As for those who don't know if there's anybody in the universe that hasn't heard about this, uh, Pastor Eddie Long has been accused of having inappropriate relationships with several male congregants. What lessons can we learn from this? I don't want to talk about Eddie Long in terms of the details of his case, but what does this conversation say about our stance on sexuality, for example? Well, I mean, uh, one lesson is, you know, at, at its core, you see in Eddie Long the weakness of this prosperity, the so-called prosperity gospel, that when the focus of the pulpit is on bling bling and on, on driving $350,000 cars and having private jets, that then, then the gospel of Jesus and the service ethic mm -hmm. and the spirit of liberation becomes consumed by religious materialism. Now when you say gospels of prosperity, we're talking about a fundamental message that you can measure sort of spiritual success and growth through material things. God meant me to drive a Bentley kind of to That's quote right. Biggie. And if my faith is large right. enough, my car will reflect that. Right. And huh. if, if I'm broke, it's because I lack faith. And what is what is so pervasive is that my pastor then becomes my vicarious wealth. And so mm -hmm. if my pastor is very wealthy, right. then then one day if I keep giving him my financial seeds right. Then I'll get, then I'll get wealthy, has. too. Yeah, and, 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 and can you put this in a little bit of context for me, though? Because it seems to me that we've always had gospels of prosperity. We had Reverend Ike. We had Sweet Daddy Grace. We had Father Divine. I mean, Prophet Jones. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't mainstream. It wasn't mainstream. It was, it was an aberration. Well, now you know, these jokers look like they're Dr. King. But the interesting huh. thing, though, is that, I mean, if we can go back to Max Weber's The Protestant Ethic, mm -hmm. and there is a sense in which in Weber's account of, of a certain kind of Puritanism, there is a direct relationship between the belief of God's grace and material wealth and gain. Right? Right. So it's deeply ingrained in the very American fabric of right. the religious imagination. That's the first thing we need to say. Well, about, about this question around sexuality, though, Brother Mark, um, there's a sense in which we need to be very careful not to frame the discussion of sexual desire by aberration. Hmm. Right. And it seems every time we talk about sexuality within the church, it's a scandal that precipitates the conversation. Hmm. And when we do that, we, I think, in interesting sorts of ways, further handicap how we talk about the fact that God created us in interesting sorts of ways as sexual beings. But well, what do you say? Well, now, I know you about to explode for a minute. Right. And if we keep talking about people well, being predators, I, 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 we can't so, get so to is that, that fact. Things very is that legitimate? But let me ask, is that a legitimate perspective to have? Or is that the perspective the church should have? I think it's titillating. You can't expect the church to have the same ethics or the same approach to these very important moral questions as someone who's in a secular institution. The presupposition is that the church, if the church would just accept no, I'm the, not making the morals that. of the saying? society, the church, everything would be There's fine. There's a difference between sexual and, ethics and, and, and sexual abuse. Right. And what, what, what the professor, what I hear him saying mm -hmm. is that if the only time we talk about uh, sex in any way, ethics, morality, practice, is in response to aberration, uh, deviant behavior. The scandal being the aberration. If that's, if that's what drives the conversation, then the, then the outcomes are going to be. I, mean, I, 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 I don't push you all even further to say that perhaps it's not an aberration. Is that what you're right. No, no, exactly. It might be, because if, 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 if we didn't treat this as a TMZ story, right. and, well, we, were just, and we were to the drill down, that. The if, it wasn't, if it wasn't boys, if it was girls, which is, which women, which is happening all the time. We wouldn't be having a conversation. This, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Well, well, the, and the, part of what I'm trying to suggest here is not about uh, uh, anyone compromising their fundamental faith commitments. I'm not suggesting that. Right. I'm not trying to push my own liberalism onto uh, uh, your particular not congregation. Moment, not for this point. I'm going to have that argument. Right. With I was going to say, he's going to make that point in a minute. Right. But, that's no way but I'm right going to have an argument with you on Christian grounds. Right. Sure. Not on the grounds of me being a secularist, right. quote unquote, and, but and, on Christian grounds that there's a way in which we can have a conversation about sexual desire, about sexuality, and that's, and that's that fair. can frame, that can actually frame how we discuss why folk are repressing and hiding who they are. Well, and, 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 I, and, and I want to have a well, conversation that, around yeah. theology mm. and Christianity that suggests that deviant theology is going to result in deviant behavior. That, but that uh, is not, it's but, not but, just but here's the challenge. <laughs> the, the same pe some of the same people who would say that gospels of prosperity, God wants me to be rich, they say that's a deviant philosophy. Right? No, you gotta read the Bible. No, no, no doubt. You gotta read the Bible. But some of those people will <laughs> The Bible is the arbiter. No, no, I'm not the arbiter. No, no, but some of those same people will point to Leviticus or point to a <laughs> New Testament and say, look, right. God doesn't want you to be gay either. So how do we, how do we, <laughs> that, that, how do we, how do we, how do we uh, sort of adjudicate between these two texts? Yeah, the Bible is both prescriptive and descriptive. And there are times when it's prescription 
around moral living is useful everywhere all the time. There are times when the Bible describes cultural historical context exactly. that offers lessons to the future. Exactly. Otherwise, you lose your mind using the Bible at all, and you'll go completely secular and have right. no faith and, in and, God uh, anyway. Of course, but I, I, first of all, I, I want to say I, I want I'm reluctant to roll up Bishop Eddie Long's personal conflict and per personal crisis oh. with prosperity gospel because it, no, it's I think it's two separate. Oranges. I think it's two separate and, issues. And I want to say I first of all that <laughs> I hope that there are black ministers mm -hmm. that can have a genuine interest in young black males. I hope indeed that his oh, ministry absolutely. to these young black males has been sincere and has produced great fruit. I think part of why people are combining these two things, though, hmm. is because part of the response to Eddie Long, at least by his own church congregant, was a little unfamiliar to most black folk, right? I mean, when you looked at the way he went, went up on stage, said very little about nothing. what... Right, nothing. said nothing, actually, quite frankly. Threw the mic down. Right, threw the mic like it was, <laughs> like it was uh, coming to America, right? Mm -hmm. Walks off the thing, and 5,000 people or 10,000 people jump up in adoration in approval. And I, don't sort think, of, I don't think that's so rare. No, I mean, certainly, no, but, certainly, no, certainly, I, certainly. I guess my point is some would argue that that's part of a kind of cult of personality. This is not new. This is not unusual. There have been many ministers, many leaders in this country who have had a loyal following, who have stood with them, given them the benefit of the doubt. And perhaps that's what's happening at Newburgh. But, perhaps that's what's happening. Some would argue there isn't that much doubt, but, but, I, but I, 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 don't I, I don't know. I don't know. What I, I would hope, I, I don't know. what I would hope is that any Christian, black, white, uh, green or yellow, uh, not outsource their faith to the authority of someone who is as fallible as they are. And, and, and part of what we're talking about here uh, is a vibrant public space uh, where everyday ordinary people can think and act intelligently and reasonably and make decisions not driven by market sensibilities, not driven by charismatic authority, but driven by their desires and aims to live a full life. And if you're really preaching the gospel, if you're really standing on what it means for Christ to sacrifice for all of us, uh, then you need to just say none of us are worthy, really. Well, like, and well, then we can okay, okay, gentlemen, gentlemen, hold that thought. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. If the most important institution historically in black life is as confused as the rest of us. It can take a step back such that it can be reimagined for the next generation. Before we run out of time, I do want to talk a little bit about solutions. I yes. want to talk about what black churches can do in the immediate time okay. to sort of solve some of the major problems we face. Now, one thing that Pastor Soares, you've done, is you run a debt-free, a, de a church that is designed to become debt-free. Not the church itself, but the congregants. You want people right. to get off of, of credit addiction, to get off of bad credit addiction in particular, to get rid of their credit cards, to pay off debt, to pay off their mortgages. I mean, you have an actual ministry devoted to, as you said, saving people while they're still on earth. In response to this massive consumer culture, mm -hmm. in response to historic oppression, that we have a choice to resist in response to our need to create generational wealth that we can pass along. I have made, as a centerpiece of my ministry, economic empowerment starting on the family level, mm -hmm. teaching people about money, helping people budget, helping people invest, making sure people have insurance. These are some of the basic tools that people need to enhance their quality of life, to upgrade their capacity, and to resist those forces that capitalize on ignorance and on historical oppression. Right. So yes, I, and I, I, I think Dr. Soros, people mm. like Dr. Butts, people mm. like Frank Madison Reed in Baltimore, Floyd Flake in Queens, have created some wonderful models, and, and younger ministers like myself and others ha have great models in, in terms of looking at and modeling what they've done. And I think that's the greatest proof that the church is not dead, but it's alive. It's I want to give Eddie the last word. word because he's chomping at the bit to respond no, no, to some I'm, of this I'm stuff. No, I'm going to just, just <laughs> gently disagree <laughs> with you on, 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 right. on, 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 on the particulars here. The only thing I want to say is that uh, churches have to be uh, reimagined. Mm -hmm. uh, our faith has to be uh, revitalized and reinvigorated. You can't be... You can't inherit prophetic energies. Hmm. You got to find your feet where you are. And this moment, Brother Mark, requires so much of us because we're so confused. So much is needed. And if the most important institution historically in black life is as confused as the rest of us, 
it can take a step back and engage in a critical reflection on its practice such that it can be reimagined for the next generation. That's all I'm asking, and that's all well, I'm well, well, if this dialogue is any indication, there's pr plenty of energy, plenty of intellect, and plenty of in insight. We can move this thing forward, and hopefully the black church isn't dead. It's just on life support. <laughs> it is. We can continue to re-energize it. Dr. Tiller, Dr. Soares, Dr. Glaw, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. We'll be right back. Gentlemen, we are out of time. Thank you so much for the spirited debate. Reverend Tillard, Reverend Soares, Dr. Glaude, thank you so much. That's a wrap for Our World with Black Enterprise. Don't forget to visit us at blackenterprise.com. I'm Mark Lamont Hill. Check me out on Facebook or follow me on Twitter. Thank you for watching Our World with Black Enterprise. Promotional considerations for Our World 